episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Magnificent Mushrooms. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined today by Elizabeth and Beth, and we also have a special guest, Emily, and they are all going to tell us about the recipes. So Beth, tell us what you chose today. I will tell you, I, um, I've checked out this book, and I keep renewing it it's by ann burn skillet love just out of laziness really i just keep renewing it you know do people do that no i figured um so i made this it's called a mushroom and cheddar dinner strata i liked calling it an erica strata over the weekend but okay you get it all right good all right so a strata you know it's uh cubed bread and eggs and and um so i uh i did that and cut up 10 slices of sourdough bread um and sauteed the mushrooms uh which were two cups of cremini 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 mushrooms um just saute those for a little bit four minutes and then um just let them set till golden, add some thyme and some green onions with that too, garlic. Uh, so it's not a ton of mushrooms, it's but two cups. And then the the bread cubes, um, you scatter in the skillet. So you remove the mushrooms and then in that oiled uh, pan, put in half the, the cubes of bread and then um, top with half of the cheddar cheese. It calls for uh, two cups of cheddar cheese, three cups of whole milk, six large eggs. Uh, so it's quite eggy and milky. Um, and uh, so you, you just put, layer it. You layer um, the bread, the cheese, the, the bread, cheese, mushrooms, bread, and then you pour the egg and milk over it and bake it for 45 to 50 minutes. I thought that this was something my, um, the grandkids would like. And yeah, they didn't really. I mean, it was just like, to, I don't know what it was. Um, they just weren't into it, but uh, that's okay. I mean, but I ended up having a lot of leftovers. So it did uh, do pretty well. They also have a little bit of a fussy way to reheat, which is to, um, I just, you put it in the oven when sprinkle with some water uh, for like 20 minutes. So instead of microwaving it. So I did that and it was very, it was really good uh, on the second day and the third day, I'm getting real tired of it. So I did put it in the freezer. So, cause Kurt's gone. And so that way he can taste it. But anyway, that was my Erica Strata <laughs> mushroom and cheddar. It sounds good. It sounds easy enough too, which is always nice, you know? Yep. And um, I don't know why those grandbabies didn't like it. What's not to like? Cheese? I, think, I don't know. Probably <laughs> they, it wasn't, they, no, I shouldn't say. One did, one didn't. Okay. Yeah, one did. Yeah. Maybe it was a texture thing. It was just preoccupation with other stuff around. That's all it was. Uh, and it's just, anyway. Um, it So it would definitely, even though it's a dinner strata, I think it'd be a wonderful brunch. And uh, I'd, hope to share it again sometime and oh and Haley my daughter said uh it could use some bacon <laughs> so um so Emily our special guest what did you do with mushrooms this this time well I love mushrooms and my husband does not uh so typically when he is out of town I choose to make mushroom and marsala tartines. And you can see that it is a very well-loved recipe card. It's one that dirties a bunch of dishes and is totally worth it, but you do have to decide like you're turning over to this. Uh, so before I found this recipe, which I either, I got it from a magazine and judging by the font, I'm gonna say it's either a cooking light or an eating well, but hard to know because I put them on cards and then I lose the source. Um, it A tartine is essentially big thick piece of bread with good stuff on top. Um, so it fancy word for something that can or cannot be fancy. 
Uh, and I bake sourdough bread. So I decided I was going to start by baking the bread myself. You do not have to do this, but do buy nice bread because you want a big honk and slice. So if you're buying pre-sliced bread, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be as good and it's not going to be as structurally sound. Uh, so I started out by baking bread, which you can do well in advance, especially because you toast the bread. So it, it's also a great use for that, you know, end of the week of a loaf. Um, and then the other thing that you can do ahead of time is you start out by making a uh, bean spread, kind of like a hummus, um, but you'd use the, um, what is it? Uh, cannellini beans. Uh, so I used my little mini food processor, which is the star of my kitchen. I never had one until a couple years ago and now I use it every day. Uh, but blend up the beans with some garlic, some olive oil, some vinegar, some thyme, uh, and you make this nice spread and it makes more than you need for the recipe. I found the leftovers I kind of use just like I would use hummus. So it's really good for dipping carrots in. And you can make that a day or two ahead of time or earlier in the day as well. Um, but then you get to the time consuming part, which is making the marsala onion sauce, I guess you would call it. Uh, you start out with um, small onions. The recipe technically calls for Cipollini onions, which I have only successfully found in the store once. Uh, so every other time I've made it, I've made it with shallots. And I'll be honest, I have not really, if I did a side-by-side -side comparison, I could probably taste a difference, but I have not had any problems with substituting the shallots, which consistently are available in the store. So you start out by browning the onions and that takes longer than you want it to. I find it takes longer than my recipe even says, uh, but the idea is just approaching this next step with patience. You add some sugar, you add a uh, stock. Uh, usually I make it with chicken stock because that's what I tend to have on hand, but that would be the only thing that would prevent this from being a vegetarian recipe. So vegetable stock also would work just fine. Uh, cook down the stock and when that's reduced by about halfway, then you pour in marsala wine and then you cook that. And so you cook it all down until it's become this syrupy, sticky with small bits because the onions just kind of dissolve into it. There's still the chunks in there, but it's this beautiful sauce. So then you cover that up on the stove and set it aside. And finally, it is time for the mushrooms, uh, which are the real star of the dish. You take a pound of mushrooms. It can be any mix, any blend. Usually I just get whatever looks the best shape when I'm at the store, um, and which I find out often ends up being those uh, cremini or baby bella mushrooms. Um, and you take a big old cast iron skillet with a fair amount of olive oil in it and cook them in a single layer in three batches uh, so that and flipping them halfway so they get really nicely browned on both sides. This is also the time to start toasting your really thick piece of bread um, because once the mushrooms are done, they're the bit that ideally you would want hot. Uh, and then it comes time to build your tartine. So you take your big, thick toast, you spread the bean spread on it, you pile it high with mushrooms, you put on the, the cooked down onions, you drizzle some of the sauce over top if you're feeling really fancy and remember to prepare it ahead of time. You sprinkle some thyme leaves on the top uh, and then you have the most delicious, messiest thing to eat. Uh, sometimes knife and fork sort of works, but if you have a sourdough with a good crust, it's hard to cut through that. I found like a steak knife is definitely the knife to use with it. Uh, but because this is something that I usually make and eat when my husband is out of town and it's just me, I found I've turned it just into a finger food. Um, it does make really nice leftovers. And as long as you aren't too picky about um, having mushrooms uh, hot, I found it really packs nicely in a lunch, other than of course the messy eating, but it fits nicely in one of those flat glass Tupperwares. Uh, you can pack it all up ahead of time or you can pack it separately and just toast some bread. Uh, but it's one of those things where I'm thrilled to get to eat it even multiple meals in a row because it's delicious and worth the work. Well, it sounds amazing. Uh, everything about it <laughs> sounds incredible, especially to me. I really like that there's the the white bean yeah. um, dip. I think that that would go so, it sounds like it would just like taste so good with the mushrooms. And what I kept on thinking while you were talking about it was that you could make this into like sort of like a bruschetta style dish too. Oh, like absolutely. You to yeah. have like a, a sharing bit, if you wanted to share. I mean, obviously. <laughs> I'm all for not sharing my mushrooms too, so. 
How about yeah. you, Elizabeth? What did you make? Well, that sounds super good. And I love to um, just, I think it's like charming that you do it while your husband is out of town because he doesn't <laughs> like mushrooms. It's like, perfect. I will make the kitchen a mess. I will use five pots and eat this like <laughs> messy thing by myself. I love that. Um, I also love mushrooms. Um, some One of my favorite things. I love, 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 love them. I think I kind of messed this up though, because I think I went... I had like too lofty of goals, honestly. Um, so I wanted, I didn't want, I wanted to like, I make mushroom tacos all the time. I'm always making like mushroom, you know, pastas with sorts of mushrooms and stuff. But I want to do something different. I have this cookbook um, or I had this cookbook. I had to return it. It was called Veg Forward. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I cooked several things from there. It's by Susan Spungen. Um, and she had a recipe in there for, mushroom bourguignon um but it called for kind of um fancier varieties of mushrooms like maitake or and stuff like that bad time of year for that you know i couldn't really find what it called for so i tried it anyway so it called for a mixture of dried and fresh mushrooms dried mushrooms were fine it called for like maitake, shiitake, and um, like oyster mushrooms. And so like I could, the only, I could find shiitakes, but I couldn't find the other ones. So I ended up using some cremini mushrooms and it was fine, but I don't think I quite got the, uh, you know, what, what she was going for. But anyway, this was kind of a complicated recipe in the sense that it just took a while. And um, similar to Emily's recipe, it called for pearl onions, um, which are like difficult to peel. Anyway, I'll just go into it quickly. But anyway, so basically you, the dried mushrooms, you put in a bowl, you pour hot water over them, let them sit. The other mushrooms, you are putting them in a Dutch oven with um, some butter or olive oil, whichever, how much, whatever one you want to use. And then you have these two cups of peeled pearl onions. Um, she gave the tip to like, kind of like put those in hot water first and it makes them easier to peel. So I did that and that did work. It was fine. Um, so you're putting the mushrooms and pearl onions in the pot. You're stirring them up. Um, if you need to do it in two batches, you can. Um, and then you reduce the heat to medium low. You add in um, a diced white and light the diced white and light green parts of a leek. You add two um, chopped carrots and then you stir in some tomato paste and you stir in some flour and then you add in a cup and a half of dry red wine and a cup and a half of beef mushroom or vegetable broth and then you throw in some soy sauce, um, some thyme and a bay leaf and then you partly cover the pot and simmer it on low until everything's kind of tender and thick, stir in a garlic clove. And then at the end, you were supposed to add in, I didn't say this at the start, you're supposed to add in, you're supposed to have reserved some of the like fresher mushrooms. So you're supposed to stir in some oyster mushrooms and some maitake, which I didn't have. So I didn't do that part because I just didn't have it, but I think that would have been really nice. So I would like to try that in the spring when it's more accessible. And then it says you can serve with, you know, polenta or egg noodles or mashed potatoes, whatever you'd like. I served it over polenta um, and it was very good. Um, I, I, I really liked it. Um, I did use actually beef broth just because I thought that would kind of add that flavor of bourguignon to this, but you could do it, you could make it veg with, with mushroom broth or vegetable broth. Um, and I think when I do it again, I'll have the steps more in my head. So I won't feel like it's as complicated as it was. Sometimes when you cook something for the first time, you're like, wait, what? This is going in when? I think it will be much easier for me. I just, for some reason, was like struggling to like know when to add things. Um, and I hope to make it again, like I said, in the spring when there's those cool mushrooms available, I can go to the farmer's market and get them. And I think that's going to be like a really nice element. So, but it was good. And like, it seemed like a wintry recipe. So I'm kind of like, I don't know. I'm like, where are you getting these my tackies in like in December? But sure. Um, anyway, it was really good. I'm really glad I tried it and I will try it again next season. And um, I think it'll be easier for me to figure out the steps and I'm going to add in the, the mushrooms at the end that are the cool fresh ones. So, yeah. Gosh, that sounds so good. I, I, 
And my husband needs to go out of town so that I can try to make a mushroom stew now. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really good. I just want to mention, I was surprised at the bulk mushrooms they had at Arbor Farms. Diff some different um, varieties. I couldn't tell you if they had what you were looking for, but definitely shiitake and the cremini, cremini and some other ones. But yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. I, I also think I made this right before Thanksgiving, which was a bad time to be looking for mushrooms because lots of folks are also doing dishes. So basically all my fault messing up this dish, but I'll try it again. So, all right, last but not least, Katie, tell us what you made. Okay. Uh, my recipe is for easy mushroom quesadillas with smoked gouda. This is from the website, thefoodkooky.com. Um, I'm a big sucker for mushroom quesadillas, always have been, and I especially love the flavors of smoked gouda and mushrooms together. So I was excited when I saw this. And it's got a little bit of a different technique than I usually use to make my quesadillas. So I was excited to try it. So you just start out with um, onions and mushrooms, slice them up like everybody else. I use cremini mushrooms. Uh, that's what it calls for. Um, but you could definitely use like any kind of mushroom here. Um, and then you mix up a quesadilla seasoning. So a spice blend of smoked paprika, dried oregano, cumin, garlic powder. And there is a little bit of chipotle chili powder in here, which I'm not a big fan of. So I usually admit, but it was such a small amount that I just left it in thinking it would be fine. And it was. So that was good. Um, you grate up a bunch of Gouda cheese and you preheat your oven and line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Then in your cast iron skillet, you cook your veg, so your onions and your mushrooms um, with some oil, saute those until they're caramelized, add salt and pepper, and then your quesadilla spice mix. And you just cook that up until the spices are cooked like two, three minutes. And um, then you remove that from the stovetop and you assemble your quesadillas on your baking tray. So I always make my quesadillas on the stovetop. I've never baked quesadillas before. So I was really curious about how this was going to turn out. But you just assemble your quesadillas how you would imagine with your flour tortilla, sprinkle on your cheese and then your vegetables and you fold it over. You put the whole tray in the oven just for like 10 minutes. Uh, it says the quesadillas are going to get golden brown. I was skeptical because I browned them on the stove, but they did. They got nice and brown in the oven, really crispy, really delicious and melty. And I was just like so pleased by this. Um, while they're cooking, it says to make a sauce and it's just a mixture of sour cream. And they said chipotle sauce, salsa. Um, we always have this habanero salsa in my house that my husband's a huge fan of, but it's like way too spicy for me, but it was awesome mixed with sour cream and it ended up being like a perfect dip for this. So this all just came together so nicely and I was just pleased. It was a wonderful lunch. Like Emily, um, my husband does not care for mushrooms, so I have to make my mushroom dishes for myself. And this was a really nice, convenient one. And the leftovers heated up great, too. So, um, yeah, I will definitely be making this again. Lots, probably. <laughs> that sounds awesome. And I, I love that technique. I mean, it's not like it's bad to make the quesadillas on the stove. But if you can just pop them in the oven and they still get all nice and brown and melty, it's like, yeah, why not? You know, that's that's yeah. more than one at a time. Like it, when I do a quesadilla, it's one at a time. Yes, us, yes, me too. So, and you can make four. Like it was like well, a time saver. Yeah, it was very cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, we want to thank everybody for watching Recipe Share and tell you to be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when our category will be serving up sliders. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making, so thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with recipe share.